Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. Now, a few years ago, I made a tutorial about the custom vertex tool, looking at the kind of basic theory of it. But this time I wanted to make a new custom vertex tutorial, fleshing out some of the details and also showing you how to build models using the image inputs, as in this example. So let's make a start. So I want to start by running over a few things that I talked about in the previous tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 3D shape and I'm going to set it to cube and let's take a look at that. And let's under 3D options turn on lighting so it's easy to visualize. Just look around from the side a bit like that. So let's now add the custom vertex tool to our cube and then look at that. So what we were doing previously is we were looking at things like bevels and I want to just show you that again. So for example, we can bevel the front face by typing the following expression for the X custom position. So it's if open brackets PZ is greater than 0.45 comma PX times 0.75 comma PX close brackets. And you see what we've done now is we've beveled our front face. Now, one of the things I didn't tell you last time is that we can actually have multiple nested if conditions so that we can actually bevel the back face within the same expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter carriage return here and then I'm going to type a new conditional. So if open brackets PZ in this case is less than negative 0.45 comma PX times 0.75 comma. Just going to put a carriage return in there to make it easier to read. And then we need to add one more bracket at the end. And you'll see now within the same expression, we've beveled the front and the back uh, vertical edges. So let's just quickly look at doing the same thing for these horizontal edges on the front and back. So the simplest thing to do is to copy this expression here and then paste it into the Z position and just make some changes. So wherever it said PZ, we need to get it to say PY. And wherever it says PX, we need to get it to say PZ. And you'll notice that we've now got a bevel on the top as well. But you're probably noticing that it looks a bit funny. So the way to fix this is to add a replace normals node after that custom vertex. And if we look at that and look at this bevel here, for example, you'll see that that now sorts itself out. So with that replace normals, we've managed to sort out the, the normals that are pointing the wrong way effectively. And you'll notice there's a bit of smoothing going on here and we can increase the amount of smoothing like that so it looks more smooth. It's a little bit odd because we've still got that sharp edge, but this is actually quite a useful option in the replace normals tool. But we actually want to reduce that till we're just getting the kind of beveling that we want like so. You see now that's all nice and sharp. So to kind of depending on the angle that you've chosen for that bevel, you'll need to adjust that smoothing angle. So anyway, that's a little bit of a refresher, but I want to show you in this tutorial something really rather different. So I'm going to delete the custom vertex tool and the replace normals. And then I'm going to add a new custom vertex and indeed a new replace normals because we're going to need that as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use an image to drive the modeling of the cube. So you'll notice that the custom vertex tool has got three image inputs and we can leverage those to actually model the cube. So the image we're going to feed it is a background. I'm just going to set up the size. It doesn't actually need to be big at all. So I'm going to go for 512 by 512, a nice retro number. Let's just have a dual viewer here so we can see our background. I'm going to switch the type to gradient and I'm going to select square. And then I just want to set these start and end. So this X start wants to be 0.5 and this X end needs to be 0.75. And you see we've now got a square in the middle like that. So I'm just going to change these colors. We could actually use this arrangement of colors, but I'm actually going to change them just so we can see a little bit better. So the white I'm going to set to full green. And then the black I'm going to set to 
full red. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and pipe it into the image one input of the custom vertex tool. And we need to do some setup here. We need to be able to get the colors of this background tool and map them onto the cube. So the first thing we need to do is actually grab the colors and I'm going to grab them using the intermediate tab. So the expression that I'm going to use is get GT R1, which is the red channel. And I'm going to use D and then open brackets, TU comma TV, close brackets. And I'm going to just paste that into the next three fields. So I've got one for each. And I'm just going to set the R1 to G1 here and to B1 here and to A1 here. So what I've done there is to store the RGBA channel values so that we can use them in our modeling expressions. Now, I just want to say a quick word about this expression. Obviously, get means go and get a particular value. So R1, G1, B1 and A1 are self-explanatory. The D simply refers to what the image grabber needs to do when it encounters edge pixels. D means duplicate. We could also use W for wrap or B for blank. And the TU and the TV are simply the texture coordinates for the shape. So before we get on to displacement, let's just visualize this using the vertex color option. So I'm going to use I1 for the red, I2 for the green, and I3 for the blue. And then let's look at the replace normals just so we can see the, the end result. So now you can see we've got those colors mapped onto the cube like that, which is, you'll say, not very interesting. But what we're actually going to be doing is not using the colors. We're going to be actually using the colors to drive the displacement of the cube. Now, when I say displacement, actually what we'll be doing with this custom vertex will be affecting the positions. And that is essentially just displacement. So we're actually doing a fancy version of what the 3D Displace tool does. But because of the way we're setting it all up and using the custom vertex tool, we'll have a lot more control over the end result. So I'm just going to undo all that color stuff because we don't actually want that. So I'm going to go back to VCR, VCG and VCB, which was the defaults. So what we're actually going to be doing is using, as I say, those color values to drive the positions. Now, what we actually need to do is to change the mapping of the shape. So I'm going to select the shape and I'm going to add a UV map tool to it. And I'm going to stick with planar and then I'm also going to hit fit. And you'll see that kind of fits it to the dimensions of the cube. So we want Y and fit and one by one by one. And this is going to help us with our mapping of the displacement. So let's come back into the custom vertex tool. So I'm going to enter an expression for the Y position that leverages the red channel of the image map. So to do that, we're going to type if open brackets, PY is greater than 0.45 comma PY plus open brackets, two times I1, close brackets, comma, PY, close brackets. And now you can see we've got this sort of a spire effect. It's jagged because we don't actually have enough subdivisions in our shape. So let's come back to our shape, increase those subdivisions up to something like 75. And you can see that's now much smoother. So everything's a little bit jaggy here. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, add a blur to my background node and set that amount up to something like 25. And you can see that's rounded off the corners quite a bit. So as I say, what we were doing there was using the red channel, this shape in the middle here, to drive this cone. But if we were, to, for example, to change the channel that we're using, so instead of two times I1, I'm going to type I2 which is the green, you'll see that we get the opposite result. So this time, everything that's green is being pushed up and conversely, the red is not being affected. And obviously, if we use the blue, 
which is i3, we would get nothing at all because there's no blue in the source image. So then let's get a little bit fancier with our displacement map. I'm going to copy the original background node and paste it. I'm going to set this to a solid color and I'm going to make that solid color 100% red like that. And I'm also going to add a rectangular image mask to it. And then I will come into the mask controls. We want to turn off solid. Actually, let's look at that so we can see how this is all shaping up. We want to set the soft edge to something like 0 0.06, the border width to 0.2, come down to the width and height, set that to 0.9 for each, and the corner radius to 0.8. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge that over the top of my original background. So merge that like that. It's going to look pretty funky initially. You can see that that red is driving that up just as high as the spire. And we don't want that. So how can we affect the height of this surrounding ring? Well, we can do it either of two ways. We could come into this red value here for our solid color and reduce the value of that. So let's do that. It's down to 0.1 and now it's down there. Or put that back up again. We could come into the merge and set the blend amount to 0.1 as well. And you can see we've now got our shape and our combined map looks like that. You can see how very, very faint that outer red ring is, but it's still actually doing some nice work on the modeling. And if you look at this, you can see those corners are giving us a really nice effect there, I think, of that sort of scoop on, on the corners there. So, you know, obviously we could do a lot more with this. I just want to really sort of show you the basic principle of it. And I think probably now is the time to actually talk about finishing off the scene, making it look nice. So first of all, let's talk about material. I'm going to add a replace materials node after the end of everything like that. And if we look at this, we can now affect the look of the finished object. So I'm going to bring the diffuse color down quite a bit like that maybe open up the specular and bring down the specular intensity a bit like that. So then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add an image map to the diffuse and I'm going to use a fast noise for that. So add a fast noise and just pipe it into the material input of the replaced material. So we need to set up the fast noise. We obviously don't want any transparency. So for the black, we're going to set the alpha to one like that. Let's come back over to noise and we're going to set the scale to something like 250. And if you look in there, you can see we've now got that nice sort of speckled material in there. However, you'll probably notice that the mapping of it is not really nice at all. And obviously we can't change the original mapping of the shape because it's driving our whole custom vertex process. So what we actually need to do is after our replace material, so select that, we need to add a new UV map. And let's have a look at that. Now, in this case, we don't want planar. We, we want to be able to map it correctly around uh, this very different sort of shape. So what we're going to do is set the map mode to cube. And then again, we're going to use fit. So it fits it to our new shape. And that's not perfect, but it's a lot better. We haven't got any of that nasty stretching. And you can probably see how that UV map is sort of fitting itself to the, the new shape of our object. Let's also reposition it. Now, again, you can't come into the original shape and reposition it, because if we did that, if we move it, say on X, you'll see that we've completely messed everything up because our custom vertex tool is depending on the shape being at zero. So we can't actually move it there. What we have to do is we have to move it to the end of our chain here. So I'm going to add a 3D transform like that. I'm going to move it over negative two on X and up by 0.5 on Y. And the point of that Y is that it's now sitting properly on the floor. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 3D duplicate node, drop that in there, have a look at that. Let's have three instances and I think the offset, let's go for two. So there we are, that's our three shapes there. Let's now add a 3D camera. So with that duplicate selected, add a 3D camera, conveniently creates a merge, inconveniently puts the camera over there. 
So what I like to do with my camera, as you probably know, is set it up like this. So I'm just going to load my default and explain what I've done is I've added an expression to the Z pivot and I've pick whipped the Z translation and I've added a negative sign to the front of that. Very easy to do. Really recommend you do that. I should also point out that my default camera has a Z translation of 10. So now if we add a 3D renderer after our merge, look at that and we rotate our camera, we're rotating about the center of the scene. So then let's just move the camera up to say one. So we're lined up a bit better like that. So we need to add in a floor. So with the 3D merge selected, we're going to add another 3D shape, select it. Plane is good. We want to rotate it through negative 90 on X and scale it up to something like 25 material. Just reduce that diffuse color way down like that. And then specular, we can reduce that intensity down as well. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add a background. So then with the merge selected, let's add another 3D shape, select it. This is going to be a cylinder. Let's set the radius to something like 25 and the height to 100. And again, let's just adjust its color, just bring that diffuse color way down. So then we need some lights. And that's why it's looking horrible at the moment. So if we turn on the lighting for the render up, we don't see anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the merge, add a three point light. So what we're going to do with this is make it a little bit green, I think, like so. And we're going to move it over five on X and two on Y, negative two on Z. And then we're going to select that merge and we're going to add a spotlight. We want to turn on shadows for the 3D renderer. And then we need to position this spotlight. So coming over to its transform, we're going to have an X position of negative seven, Y position of two, a Z position of negative one and a Y rotation of negative 90. And you can see how that's now lighting that up and giving us some nice shadows as well. And we might just want to come into the shadows and turn on softness constant and maybe just increase the penumbra angle so it's a little bit softer like that. And what I'm also going to do is just change the color something like this. So I've done quite a bit more work on this, uh, on the lights and the camera and so on, and adding a little bit of sort of post-processing. And I'll give you a link to my finished scene so you can dig through and see what I've done. Uh, I also want to point out that I've actually added in some extra modeling all within this one custom vertex tool. So what I've done here with the Y expression is I've added a min to this variable here which has chopped off the tops of the spires. So I could actually make that more extreme if I wanted. I've gone for 2.2 there, but if I went for 1.5, you can see I've chopped them off very severely. Put that back to 2.2. I've also added in some modeling around the base there and around the middle. And I've done that in the X expression. Again, you see I've nested this particular if expression here. And I've done the same thing for the Z. So that top line is creating that little lip at the base. And the second line is creating this hipped extrusion across the middle. And you'll notice that I'm using an and there to select just that area to extrude. So this is where the custom vertex modeling option really gives you a, a lot of advantage over the basics of displacement because we can actually create quite a bit more detail. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again soon.